Stanford University. <clears throat> Welcome to EE380, Spring 2011-2012. I'm Andy Freeman. The other course organizer is Dennis Allison. Um, throughout the year, we've talked about a wide range of large platforms for delivering services. However, they've been mostly distributed for reasons of redundancy and speed of light. Of course, a couple of them have been distributed for reasons of offloading work onto other people. Uh, but today's talk is different. It's about a system that is distributed for a very different reason, namely control. In a world where we're carrying around walled gardens and think they're personal, it's nice to see work on systems that support an army of Davids. Uh, today's speaker, Johan Paulsey of Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, will be talking to us about Tribbler, a fourth generation peer to peer technology. Thank you for that introduction. I'm in the. Uh, an army of Davids is an interesting, uh, an interesting qualification. Selling your slings. <laughs> and, um, and I'll be uh, talking about a very idealistic uh, thing of transforming media and money. So first I'll uh, talk a bit more about uh, uh, the, uh, the, the vision of uh, cyber uh, collectivism. Oh, I need to be on. Yeah. yeah, I forgot to tell you, don't screw with the buttons. It blinks. All right. Um, so I hope to talk about, uh, first, explain the vision of uh, cyber collectivism, then uh, a bit about uh, uh, the work we've been doing over the past uh, years, and then touch upon the key things we did in our experimental system for the past years, uh, and really go in depth on what we delivered, and then go back for a few slides on what that means and what that gives uh, for a few years uh, in the future. Uh, for this big uh, vision. Am I okay? Uh, I'm just switch up your mic, so sorry. Oh. So the vision is big, that we create this human cooperative super organism, that uh, when things run smoothly and cooperate, that you actually get more uh, yield out of it and more speed as this picture. Oh. No blinking uh, button. Good. That, um, as I was saying, that if uh, humanity works together, that we can achieve more. Huh? I'm uh, quite an idealist. Then uh, a definition of uh, this new term, cyber collectivism. As you can read here, uh, it's all about a group, that a hierarchy-free group, self-organizing, and then uh, trying to cooperate, and also it needs to scale, not just to a few people uh, working together, uh, as we've seen in, in the normal world, but actually scale to millions of people uh, working together without having direct contact or ever having direct interaction uh, before. And then the, the nasty bit, or uh, the, uh, the good bit, depending on your viewpoint, that it should have full isolation. From uh, from disruption from governments, uh, uh, which uh, trying to restrict things, and um, to get uh, concrete, uh, focusing this talk on the media side, uh, where uh, we have a micro blogging uh, uh, smartphone app, which is uh, under development, or is operational and and further improved, which uh, like Twitter and uh, extended and is fully decentralized. And on the money uh, uh, part, that we're sort of uh, the, the big vision of preventing a global financial meltdown uh, by uh, transforming money. So these are quite big claims and big uh, uh, ambitions. So this will take not just a few years, but a few decades to realize. But this places this in a, in a bigger context. But how are you going to change the world? Um, yeah, if you uh, look at a bit of the historical uh, perspective, uh, the boom and bust cycle has ever always been uh, uh, with us. If you look at a, uh, the historical uh, uh, studies, a very nice, a, uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, work here, then you see that even in Roman times, you already had the bailout money from the Roman Emperor. Huh? There was too much land speculation going on. Uh, was it 33 AD? And uh, 
there needs to be a three-year loan uh, just to get them out of, a, uh, uh, out of uh, the trouble. And uh, we see that after a few thousand years, uh, it's now instead of a single emperor, it's uh, 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 other people who have to decide, uh, but it's still bailout money after too much speculation. Um, so what we're trying to do is completely isolate uh, 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 a system uh, where there's a few million and then empowered people. Uh, and there's uh, uh, then no uh, uh, politicians involved because uh, they're trying to do the right thing. But after a few decades, they just want to have more growth in the economy and all these. Uh, and they, yeah, there hasn't been a disruptive uh, uh, collapse for a few decades. And then things get relaxed. <coughs> um, so isolate a system ruled by uh, a people and uh, just the people. And uh, uh, the rules are made uh, by software. So that's very strange. And then not just transforming, but actually reinventing uh, money. So this is, uh, again, uh, big claims. And safer than gold. That should sort of be uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the design of the system. Eh? It doesn't give you much interest, but as Dr. Doom is predicting and all these things, yes, half of your wealth uh, will go, will burn up in smoke because uh, things will go bankrupt, etc. Eh? So the, 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 the sort of the, uh, the currency, the safe haven currency, designed specifically to be uh, safe as a fallback. The problem is that not everybody can buy the gold and there's no, just not enough silver and gold out there. If everybody would go invest in the Swiss franc, it's also quite stable, but that also has uh, its limits. So you need uh, 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 more uh, liquidity and market debt. <coughs> um, and one of the sad things, if you talk to economists, you see that um, it's there's not much changing. Uh, the, tire the capital ratios are improved and we add a few percent. Uh, but still, the fundamental things with the banks, uh, they are not uh, changed. Uh, and so in a few years, we are uh, uh, back to where we started and the bubbles can rise again. Everybody just uh, relaxes and growth is back. Um, and it always starts with housing bubbles. So, and there's this big thing, which is a, uh, very obscure. It's only practiced in Sweden for a few thousand people, but it is a zero percent interest rate mortgage, which is very special. I'll be talking a bit about with the generational model. And this is, I think, uh, not often appreciated by, by scientists and uh, not very deeply studied. Uh, but it works and it is sustainable and uh, it's a, a different model um, it than, uh, um, than the uh, commonality with the commercial banks. And uh, so this is where we're working towards with this system. And but just like oatmeal and IPv6, eh, why would you use it? Eh, everybody knows it's good for you, but you need to bootstrap. Eh? Bootstrapping needs to be inherent in a system like this. You cannot change the world and, and, unless you give them something what they want. One of the things which is ripe for disruption is internet video streaming. Eh? So, and I'll be showing that you can use media and uh, a financial ecosystem to bootstrap uh, this system. So the six steps towards glory, um, which very concrete steps. Each of them is, is not easy. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of research grants are needed to pull this off for volunteers who uh, slave away for nothing. But this can all be, uh, be made. So first is uh, uh, given, uh, I'll, I'll be explaining more, that it's realistic that this year we will launch a system where you can earn credits by giving away bandwidth to others. And you can actually de redeem this for faster downloads of your computers or reliable video streaming. And in red, because it's uh, uh, quite disruptive for, uh, uh, for areas without media freedom, that you can actually proxy for others. Or another uh, commercial area that you have web hosting. So you can earn these credits. And the next step is you can actually give those credits away. So you, can, you have a market where you have these, these credits and they can become co transferable. And then you actually created your own, uh, uh, your own currency system or bandwidth currency. And then the next step is to, uh, that's 2014 or something, that you actually uh, can move them from smartphone to smartphone without any intermediary. So this is again another uh, uh, very disruptive stop, step uh, uh, for the banking uh, business, uh, that you just have an NFC phone or whatever, all these Androids or, or phones where you can still install software freely. And then you transfer money. It's very interesting. 
Um, and the next step is another uh, big one that you uh, prove a principle, because this is not easy, but you have a zero interest uh, lending system. Eh? So you need strong identity, you need some mechanisms uh, that people don't cheat, lie and fraud, because there's real money involved now. And the next step uh, uh, that you have sort of this, uh, this uh, uh, years in the future, you need to uh, have all the, uh, the economists on board uh, in, your, uh, in your research that you create this fallback uh, uh, currency, which is asset based. Uh, th this is not going back to the gold standard. Those days are over, but it is something uh, sort of cyberspace uh, equivalent. And then the big glorious day that you can copy the existing model of, uh, 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 which is operational in Sweden, that you can do mortgages without interest, which is very uh, interesting. So that would mean uh, you have sort of, you create a dent in the, um, the, uh, the bubble inducing uh, real estate market. So for a few years I've been uh, measuring with the team uh, these sort of systems where people collaborate uh, uh, on a large scale. Uh, and been publishing that uh, was it a few years uh, ago already. And uh, what I found over the years, uh, so this is the, the, the Wikipedia's, uh, uh, the, the Facebook where people had uh, the friendship and trust and um, uh, the all these 2.0 things. That the key principles you need to get, uh, uh, get going and organize well is uh, yeah, distinguish the good and the evil, the good and the bad contribution to the community. And then the regulation mechanism for computer resources, uh, that if you want to have be fully self-organizing, uh, either have uh, donation rallies, like you see with Wikipedia, uh, that uh, yeah, you need a lot of income uh, to support a, a, such an endeavor, um, or you make it fully self-organized, that people just donate their hard disk or their CPU cycles. If you want to have this sustainable, you need to, uh, it needs to be a group feeling and a sense of belonging. These are also the more fuzzy things which also proven to be very uh, important in the long term for these things. Uh, here you see a few ingredients of the uh, sort of the 2.0, the, the web 2.0 uh, phenomenon and how strong they are for a few examples. Uh, so Flickr is very much on sharing. Twitter, all about the here, the now, the presence, and the real-time uh, yeah, conversation. And then uh, uh, Dig, all about links and sharing them and, and talking about them. So now we have the big vision, the, the key media focus on a, uh, uh, media freedom, the, the, the long-term uh, bank of bits vision. But you also need very concrete uh, short-term goals. Uh, which are scientifically publishable. Uh, that's as a scientist or pretending to be a scientist like me. You need to uh, uh, get going. So this would be a really uh, big step that you have a million people where you can change their behavior that you have measurable enhanced cooperation uh, level like uh, faster download and, uh, and, and, this, uh, um, uh, and the enhanced privacy. You, to be able to do that, uh, you need to uh, have solutions and detect the free rise, the lying, the cheating, and people sabotaging your system. Uh, so we were, um, this is ongoing work that uh, we keep the academic purity. We have zero servers, uh, so it's not dependent on a DNS infrastructure, uh, no web servers uh, 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 somewhere, and no portal or sort of entry uh, uh, system. And uh, as I explained with the bands as a currency, so you have a market, you have earning and redeeming of credits, does that also mean you've created some sort of cyber economy already? With a million participants. So this is a very uh, uh, concrete uh, goal. But is it just a utopian dream? Or can this actually be built? And so over the coming uh, majority of my presentation, I'll show how uh, deep the roots go. That we had uh, a few years of uh, operational system and that we uh, think that we have an idea how to just keep going incremental improvements and uh, deliver something that works. So this is uh, some vintage pictures. F when I was still uh, uh, playing around uh, with, a, uh, this is the pre few years before Wikipedia uh, uh, went uh, very popular. So I uh, was also working on a system like that, but I was slightly wrong because I was focusing for the music encyclopedia on 
structured data with a database and public write access. <coughs> and of course, being a, a, a young enthusiastic, I found technology much more interesting than uh, communities, uh, which was a grave mistake. So uh, nobody cites this work and, and nobody's interested in it. But it worked and we had a few thousand uh, people actually working on this, but it never uh, uh, went bigger and uh, uh, became something. Big lesson. Another big lesson also is uh, yeah, that we got a, a th uh, uh, operational system where you just walk around. Yeah, this is before uh, everybody had these white uh, headphones, and um, you had a Wi-Fi on your uh, on your uh, device, uh, and uh, it just people came in Wi-Fi range. And it recognized it with some fancy things, uh, uh, some recommendation, and uh, it saw, yeah, this is probably uh, uh, some content you like. And then it automatically copied it to your device and did some refreshing and all that stuff. Okay, battery, uh, battery lifetime uh, was not that good. And as you can see, the user interface was also totally unusable. Uh, so this is also a big lesson. Nobody cares about this work. Nobody cites this work. It's all far too difficult to become really usable, but it worked. Another uh, step forward is uh, uh, probably the first uh, uh, published about a fully decentralized social network system. Um, again, it works, it helps if you have a PhD in computer science, if you want to use it. <coughs> um, yeah, so this is also uh, uh, took quite some time uh, to get working, and uh, one of the key things is if you want to do this fully decentralized, that you have the nut and firewall issues to deal with, and how do you do invitation? How does it spread when people go online or offline? But it worked. Uh, so very early work uh, here. Another one is also uh, that we uh, 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 got an operational system where you can donate your bandwidth to Wikipedia. As Wikipedia uh, uses a lot of bandwidth, and uh, uh, a lot of people actually want to help by donating money, but we made an operational system that uh, had all these videos inside Wikipedia, they use a lot of bandwidth, and uh, now uh, you can sort of uh, host and see these things. So it was adding Wikipedia together, HTML5 together, and on-demand streaming that it automatically starts up. So but uh, this is also uh, too obscure and uh, uh, it's, it's uh, installation wise and it just needs, uh, if you, you need to, um, uh, your video on demand performance needs to be start up in seconds and then you have the browse to take care of. So it's um, not the right model to, uh, to go mass uh, market, so to say. Um, now, diving a bit deeper. So this is uh, the flagship project uh, uh, my team has been working on for many years. That uh, we want to evolve from streaming to the bank of bits. And so after all these years of experimenting, um, we've created what Fox News called the invincible file sharing software. Uh, because uh, it has no center and it's not easy to take down. So if you want to have the academic uh, view on it, how we build this. This is a very recent uh, publication. Just a few pages. Is it four pages, I believe? get the highlights. So this implements uh, the cyber collectivism vision and uh, this is one of the, uh, I'm coordinating one of the last uh, uh, active uh, experimental file sharing uh, uh, groups and so we actually build software uh, which is disruptive with multiple universities and uh, many people are involved. And um, we keep it academically pure so this is the, uh, the, zero, uh, uh, the zero server uh, overlay. So we've been deployed for uh, quite a bit and we started as a, uh, a simple BitTorrent uh, extension. And now over all these years we had uh, uh, over a million installs and also on, uh, uh, was it 25,000 monthly uh, active users community. So we're small, but uh, we're, we're getting there and uh, uh, we're getting uh, increasingly more fans because we're going uh, beyond uh, the other offerings. Uh, so we're free software, uh, LGPL, various platforms. And we're going uh, beyond BitTorrent because of the, uh, the decentralization and also the social bit we're working on. <coughs> and a special feature, is that the only way to take it down is to take the internet down. And so that's this very strange uh, uh, principle. 
uh, the old systems. There's actually patents how to effectively kill Kaza by spam, uh, death by spam. Uh, because decentralization, uh, Kaza and also email and all these things, uh, decentralization, but if you can't find anything, or if your uh, keyword search doesn't scale or all these things, then uh, it's still not a usable uh, system. Uh, and something which is new, which we never talked about uh, in public, is that uh, we've been working for many years already on privacy by design, that you actually have complete, uh, or uh, as, as good as it can get, uh, privacy plus performance. So this is the first time I'll be talking uh, uh, about this uh, in public, how it works and what we're uh, doing. This is uh, the, uh, the new user interface, which will uh, go online in a, a, a few weeks, a few months. And um, so it's very simple. You just search for stuff, and you can see uh, what content is out there, what people are sharing. And also, this is the key thing uh, for uh, self-organization, that you had this di direct democracy uh, sort of uh, implementation that people can bundle content together, eh, which videos you like. Eh, just like YouTube, you can make playlists, but here it's, uh, it's the key thing of making it scale. You can bundle content together and people can vote on it. And in just a few weeks after this feature launched, we got 60,000 unique votes on the content. And, and okay, I was a bit skeptical, the PhD student doing this. It's like, yeah, and you're forcing people to vote, and will you get content, yeah, and are you not worried? And, uh -huh. And we were both uh, quite amazed, and uh, I was proven wrong that this is much more popular than we anticipated. <coughs> and uh, that means that uh, you can keep uh, spam out of your system as long as you have an honest uh, majority uh, of real people. So, diving a bit uh, deeper, um, on the top you have the uh, understandable user interface, yeah, which normal people, uh, uh, so we have uh, four people working on this. Uh, to get this understandable, and this is uh, always a harder problem, especially to get talent there and to get it uh, to, uh, to get it integrated and to get them to understand how to translate the difficult computer science concepts <coughs> into understandable user interfaces. And uh, I'll be talking about a, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer core, which is uh, uh, so we still have original 11-year-old BitTorrent code in there, uh, BitTorrent. 11-year-old uh, uh, technology, and now we're replacing that with our own uh, implementation uh, with of a new generation uh, protocol. Uh, so we have a dual stack implementation for downloading and other things and designed for proxying. Um, reputation system where I'll be talking a lot about, and then the Elastic Database I'll have uh, several slides about. And the key thing <coughs> is what we started doing differently is that we are a peer-to-peer -peer client with an integrated database, an SQL database integrated into a piece of file sharing software or self-organizing uh, uh, software as it's now evolving. So it knows about people who it's communicating with and uh, content around it. So this is really different that you, when you close off, eh, you have the session boundary, when you close off your session, that you start it up again, that this this information is still available to the network. So everybody just has a piece of the puzzle and you distribute all these, uh, uh, this functionality of the portal, the web server, all the metadata and all these things. It's decentralized. So this is the first time that uh, uh, when we started in, uh, programming 2005, the first time that a file sharing client uh, had uh, an integrated uh, SQL database. So, um, I'll be diving uh, a bit deeper. I can talk for days about Tribler, but I have to limit myself, unfortunately, <laughs> um, about uh, uh, this uh, uh, topic. And uh, the first is uh, our peer-to-peer uh, -peer downloading engine. Uh, the, uh, so we have the BitTorrent, and this is the alternative. So I spent uh, more than two years of my life uh, full-time measuring BitTorrent uh, back in the days. And uh, uh, what we learned uh, uh, from this is uh, uh, integrated all uh, into LibSwift. Uh, so 11 years after the original uh, was created, we're now uh, trying to improve uh, uh, upon it. So fully built for video on demand and also standardized. 
So uh, together uh, with uh, Victor uh, Grishenko, uh, so this is moved in just a few years from uh, ununderstandable uh, stories, uh, Russian stories from Victor by the coffee uh, to an actual upcoming ITF internet standard. So the work group PPSP has adopted this as their work group uh, uh, proposal. And it's now also running on an iPad and Android smartphones, eh? so a peer-to-peer -peer streaming engine inside a set of box and also even inside a television. And uh, implementation of light footprint, one of the early uh, simple ones is just 100 kilobit, um, uh, kilobytes and that was operational on uh, Wikipedia as you can see. So this is a picture of uh, Wikipedia uh, with our uh, system operational with the video on demand and this is an iPad uh, screenshot of the peer-to-peer -peer engine. And um, what makes it different than just a peer-to-peer -peer engine is that it's more a uh, content uh, delivery engine. It's more generic because it's inherent uh, uh, caching and it can also operate uh, by the, uh, if you install it sort of in the cloud, uh, you have, uh, you're directly competing with the CDN market. And it has an interesting property that it has the so-called content-centric networking uh, approach that with a single hash you can download the content, so uh, location independent. This is very strange that in the network you can cache at any position the content. Uh, so HTTP uh, was not designed uh, uh, for this property that you could cache it anywhere. Uh, there's the, the time to live and all these things and, and it's not, uh, this is specifically designed for this and you can read all about this in this uh, publication. <laughs> So, what, what were the goals? Uh, so we want to make faster than the current generation and also a smaller footprint for these embedded uh, uh, devices and s be the first to really have solid support for the downloading case, even live streaming from a webcam to millions potentially, and also video on demand uh, scaling to swarms of, a, uh, uh, of large scales. And then offer this, uh, uh, this instant satisfaction, you click play and the video starts uh, quickly. Uh, it also needs to be uh, flexible that you can plug in uh, various uh, components for congestion and uh, uh, for reciprocity and this peer discovery. And a very interesting one is uh, the not uh, firewall usage, especially uh, with the smartphones. All these, uh, uh, all these smartphones, they don't have public routable internet addresses anymore. So, if everybody starts using uh, uh, these uh, uh, apps or, or the, uh, this engine from a smartphone, you will have a swarm where 99% is behind a, a, a non-public uh, routable IP. That's very annoying, and there's a, uh, then you need a central server or something to coordinate and do the puncturing. So we have a, a solution for that, uh, fortunately, and the scalability. Also, uh, the previous protocols were not designed that you can just donate my one terabyte hard disk to the community, and that you can start uh, seeding that. It doesn't scale uh, that well. And uh, also that you, we can carry it over, preferably UDP, but also other uh, other. Uh, underlying protocols. So how does it work? Uh, it's a messages and uh, you have various types of messages and it's very simple. Uh, so there's no reciprocity in here, that's a different uh, uh, protocol. Uh, you just, it's sort of a distributed FTP uh, guided by a single hash. But it's also uh, a bit uh, uh, interesting because they're multiplexed together, so uh, simplified state machine, it's all uh, has uh, interesting properties. And it looks simple, you have a handshake, huh? so peer A and B, you have a handshake and this is the pieces I have from a certain uh, content. Then you get a reply on UDP, this is the handshake, okay, I want to talk to you, uh, this is what I have and please hint, I'm interested in this content. And then already at the third, uh, uh, the third UDP packet, you already get uh, content. So you get data plus a hash, and then uh, you can talk more. So this is very quick. This is, a, uh, 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 this is all designed for the low latency video on demand startup. If you then look a bit broader in the context of a swarm, 
you get a uh, uh, people talk to other people, uh, etc. And then you have the handshake, the half, uh, and then you already have uh, uh, other pieces, etc. And uh, uh, you can see your uh, chunk availability. So this is especially important for uh, for live streaming uh, case. And this is a difficult slide, <laughs> just a warning. This is why we think uh, it's all a, a bit more uh, efficient and uh, <coughs> because it uses a uh, exotic, uh, uh, well not exotic, uh, this is, uh, was it 40 year old uh, 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 Merkle hashes or, uh, but using uh, them uh, as we're doing it has not been done uh, often. Um, so a single root hash uh, where you just uh, use uh, uh, show two five six and you block uh, uh, you you do your content, but uh, you create a hash of your content. But what a Merkle hash does is that it creates in our case a binary tree where you have chunks zero one two three. This is the actual data on this layer, and then you create a hash of just this one kilobyte block. Uh, keep it simple: one kilobyte block, uh, one kilobyte to rule them all. This is your hash here, this is your hash here, and then you create, of these blocks, you create, of just these hashes, you create another hash, and another hash. So if you change a single bit here, it will change this hash, and this hash is just a concatenation. Uh, just you concatenate this and you create, so a single bit change here propagates upwards and also here. So that single root hash validates the entire uh, tree, and uh, every change will propagate upwards. And it's very chain, very strange. What you can do now is self-certifying atomic datagram. So you can give a single kilobyte, like this example, the number four, and then you provide this hash, this hash, and this hash. And what happens? These are the uncle hashes. That okay, you get this data, you create a hash out of it. You concatenate it with this, you create hash number 9, you concatenate it here, you get 11, and then you combine it with 3, you also got, and then you can just see with 1, 2, 3 hashes, the uncle hashes and this block, that you actually irrevocable proof that you got the right stuff. This is very powerful because you, there's no extra metadata, no extra fancy stuff, no handshaking going on. You just have a few hashes and a block and it works. Um, and then we get the next step, then we get special numbering. So now, instead of just doing a linear numbering of blocks, what LibSwift does is make things complicated and you actually have a numbering scheme where you create a uh, uh, zero and then two, four, six. This is the individual block. So if you want to talk about acknowledgements or you want to talk about a hint, then you use these numbers to do the one kilobyte pieces. And if you want to do a range, you just talk about uh, these uh, uh, special uh, uh, numbers. So there's the ordering scheme, which is all uh, documented in the report. And so by this bun bin numbering, you can both do the one kilobyte block, but also range. That means you can do scalable acknowledgments. With a single acknowledgement, just instead of having uh, bitmaps or all these uh, things you can just do with a single number if you align this with your piece baker and other things you have a, uh, a faster implementation right so i can't talk hours about this let's move on um, and as i said it's very difficult to do uh, uh, not and firewall uh, traversal especially these mobile devices so we uh, uh, in tribler and all deployed we did thousands of uh, uh, devices we got uh, 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 measured um, because, uh, so uh, let me say that properly. So within Tribler, we deployed some uh, measurement uh, uh, software that the user uh, installs the software and it, it measures how go what the timeout is of the uh, knot when it closes, what sort of traffic it lets through and how sensitive it is. Um, so this is one of the deeper measurements uh, uh, on a large scale of uh, the deployed uh, hardware out there. And so we bought a few boxes and to see how res uh, which are uh, having this behavior. So we can test out our hardware 
and uh, our software, sorry, on, on actual hardware, uh, which has high loss and all these things uh, with combined with real NAT hardware. So this is, if you want to build real software, you need these sort of uh, uh, things, or you need too many guinea pigs uh, to experiment on. So this is all automated. This is very uh, hand. Uh, I'll talk about bit more uh, about our neighbor introduce methodology. So you don't need a central server to puncture uh, this. Thanks to uh, uh, very generous grants of the European Union, we've uh, been able to work with, uh, together with the BBC, so we have content and also pioneer R&D in the UK. They uh, worked for many years with us and um, they got LibSwift to work uh, on a setup box uh, where you can do nice video on demand and they actually deployed this to living rooms, uh, uh, so these uh, uh, a few dozens of boxes uh, were produced. And uh, uh, people are using them, uh, and there's all these various features uh, you can see. And uh, the real details are at this uh, URL. So uh, very impressive uh, uh, that this is from academic research to actual uh, uh, deployment in living rooms and evaluation. And then how does it compare to, uh, uh, to other uh, uh, alternatives? So this is the BitTorrent uh, uh, protocol compared to uh, LibSwift. So we want to see how our system scales and what is the maximum performance of our uh, uh, code base. Uh, so we used uh, the heavy high-end machines and then we created various swarms and created this flash crowd scenario huh, where you have one computer has the content and all the others jump on it and try to download it too. And uh, so each of these dots is a, uh, uh, an average of uh, uh, numerous experiments with a few parameters. So we have the swarm size, which is increasing. And then you can see how long does it take to, uh, uh, for all these uh, leachers to get their content. So we can see, after a lot of work, that uh, we were able to uh, beat the market-leading uh, client, which is MuTorrent, in terms of uh, performance by having a consistently faster uh, download speed in, in this case and other cases. And uh, we're now in small swarms. We're also getting close on, uh, on LibTorrent. And our code is a, uh, not optimized a, uh, very much uh, while they had years of very high tuning and very high experts on this field. So we hope to uh, get a, uh, closer or uh, below in all circumstances. <laughs> And then uh, the Q media, huh? this, this, uh, uh, the government threat and isolation and media freedom. How do you do that? So sort of unbreakable streaming, not just uh, performance and that you have less stalls and that, huh? like the YouTube experience, it almost never breaks down. It just works. There's actually, if you add proxies, uh, you can add, uh, you can enhance performance. Uh, but if you do a uh, lot of proxies and, and poor, uh, uh, was it uh, not enough bandwidth in the, in the proxies, then you actually kill a lot of performance. Uh, so instead of downloading directly, you use these proxies to hide your identity, and then you can uh, download, consume media, uh, or uh, upload, etc., in privacy. So this is uh, what we're working on with LibSwift. Uh, we haven't talked about this, but this is what we've been uh, doing for many years actually already. You can see that in 2006, we had an operational system which already has users' friends as proxies. But um, nobody cites this work, nobody uses it, this doesn't have millions, because this is a very difficult problem <coughs> to get operational. Um, one of the things is, uh, like in 2006, you have here very small upload and uh, a, a larger uh, uh, download uh, capacity. Yeah, so these asymmetric links they are actually not very good for peer-to-peer -peer because when you do bartering, you actually, uh, your performance degrades to uh, you download as much as you upload. So that does it, that's not very nice for your link utilization. So this problem existed uh, in 2006 and it uh, still continues to persist. So what uh, we implemented uh, and made operational there and integrated in Tribler is that you have a friend who is idle, and uh, he interacts with the swarm also, with the same swarm, and he does some uploading and downloading, eh? he does tit for tat, and he gives away also content to you. So that means you're downloading yourself and doing tit for tat, and uh, you get some uh, of your friends. And I have now multiple friends, you can actually 
uh, uh, do uh, decent streaming, huh? like, like this HD sustainable streaming, if you have the capacity for that. So this is 2006 work, and a bit of the mathematics, huh? because you have... Uh, um, these are equal chunks, eh, because you need to do the tit for tat, so by definition uh, the up and down are equal, and then this is also the equal to what you can give away to your friend. Um, and uh, because uh, uh, you uh, uh, have your constraint of your upload, eh, so you both upload to the swarm and upload to your friends, so that means that uh, your what you can give away is sort of half your upload capacity. So very simple uh, things if you just assume um, equal equal uh, size internet. So a step forward from 2006 to uh, what we're working on, what I call uh, privacy by uncertainty. Uh, so BitTorrent uh, 11 years ago uh, it was never designed for privacy. That's difficult. And what we're working on is that you never expose how far you've downloaded. You, 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 everybody sort of looks like a proxy. And, um, and these proxies are not just anybody. No, they're actually uh, investors. They run investment function because we have credits, which you uh, can earn credits and you can redeem credits and they can be exchanged on the marketplace. So they, that means that in the cyber economy, uh, you have these investors and um, okay, although you have different roles, you have the seeders and downloaders uh, in the protocol, everybody looks like a proxy or an investor in the swarm. And given the market for bandwidth currency, if we assume that, then you have real money for people who have unique bytes. Because everybody wants those bytes, you inject it and you get these bandwidth currency in return which is, uh, can be exchanged uh, for money. So this is also an interesting business model, uh, which is ongoing work. And um, we hope to deploy this in a, in a, in a few months. Then, um, another piece of the puzzle. So we talked about the download engine, which should scale and where you can donate, uh, donate a terabyte and you can actually earn credits which is operational and uh, reputation system I'll be talking about. But then actually there's an interesting piece uh, which, we, uh, uh, which we developed over the years, is that you need to sort of have this gossip methodology, how you communicate, uh, which is different than a swarm communication. You sort of have as a, the system model that you have a dark cloud, the, <coughs> the hostile environment where everybody can just attack you. And you have everybody's blocked usually with a firewall, and you try to sort of stay in sync with the rest of the world, what they're doing. So you have partial, you always have partial synchronization with the cloud, because there's updates happening everywhere, and uh, uh, you need to assume hostile uh, intent. Um, so this is a, uh, a work which is pending uh, a publication. And um, this is not easy. Um, so this is different than the gossip systems uh, which have been worked in the past. Huh? This is not simulation work, this is actually deployed in, uh, in Tribler. And um, so it's fully decentralized database. Huh? It's different than the, the, the SQL databases where you have the single central coordinator or you have the, uh, the no SQL things, the, the, the key value storage and all these things. This is a uh, propagating of, uh, of database updates. So <coughs> The primary uh, uh, thing is, uh, is, this, uh, is this puncturing and this loop, um, but it's designed huh, just to define what hostile is. So we have the not firewall to deal with, we have a uh, churn that people turn off their computer um, uh, uh, after a few minutes, and, uh, and they also cheat uh, the protocol, you have to assume uh, that. Um, and what we do is do random walk around the network and ask people for, uh, for an update. And, um, <laughs> so node A, it sends a single UDP packet to node B, introduction request, and uh, it gets a response. Uh, so in the introduction request, it's like, hey, uh, do you? Uh, 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 this is uh, the message I had, the, the content I have. Do you have uh, some uh, additional database updates uh, uh, for me? This is my sync state. Uh, please send. Uh, this is using the Bloom filters, etc. And then the int so he gets already also data in the introduction response. And what happens, there's also a message to B, 
which is a puncture request. So this is the essence of uh, uh, our walker, our random walker, that uh, yeah. now in the response to A, you actually, it's like, yeah, here's your data, uh, which you uh, hopefully will be interested in. And by the way, I sent a puncture request uh, to node C, and uh, uh, node C uh, actually uh, is, uh, uh, if it's still online, it will have uh, tried to puncture you. So here's the address. If you want to uh, talk to this person, then you can now uh, do a hop to node C. Uh, so this is interesting that uh, you, every time you talk to somebody, you get introduced to somebody else. So this is fully decentralized and doesn't require any central server. So this is uh, interesting. I was quite glad that this actually worked because on paper it looked too good to be true. Look at uh, just a few messages and, and if you look at uh, I had uh, if you look at the nightmares, you have all these standards for, st uh, for, for puncturing and all these things. And this actually also works and it's uh, slightly less code. Um, and um, uh, so this also means this is stateless. So it, it is, it's very interesting that uh, in, in the code it's uh, very uh, simple and we integrated also uh, the privileges and the public key infrastructure uh, on this. So then we have the, the, the full uh, database uh, functionality. What can it do? You start with a node. And you have these, this concept of rounds, uh, no, nobody needs to be synchronized, but uh, you have occasionally you talk to people, you do this random walk, and they have an update of the database, and this sort of uh, node A then uh, talks to somebody, and this person also talks to somebody else, so you see this progress of time, and you can see that every progress, uh, they have the database still in there, uh, they have the update is persistent, and then every round they talk, so you see this exponential spreading. <laughs> so this uh, the graph here is a picture of uh, the performance. We have a, a thousand real uh, instances uh, of uh, of this Elastic database running on uh, numerous servers. The round time is uh, every five seconds uh, you start talking to somebody randomly, and then uh, uh, you uh, have this uh, 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 exponential deployment uh, of uh, exponential dissemination. Of, uh, of updates. So it's very, uh, very flexible and depending on how aggressive you are, how many, uh, if you do initial, you talk, if something's created, you push that out to uh, 10 people around you and all these things. Um, then you have various uh, yeah, performance curves. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so this is a, uh, if you initially push it out to 10 people, uh, so if a, a new uh, so this experiment a new message is uh, instantly pushed out to ten people, you push it out to five, and then those five start initially in, uh, pushing it out, uh, or zero that you you're the only one who's uh, initiating this. Uh, uh, this is the epidemic is sort of how the the, the original Damers paper, uh, which is a uh, was it. Uh, 18 years old or something. Very uh, interesting uh, uh, how nobody ever got uh, these old ideas, which are very good. Uh, never seem to get it right or deploy to a large scale uh, people. So this is uh, the anti-entropy algorithm from, uh, from Damers. And um, uh, yeah, there's this minor thing that we're doing better than the theory. So this is uh, made me very suspicious uh, because what you see here, you do the uh, we do the push. This is our uh, actual code, uh, and you see that uh, the uh, uh, which should be comparable uh, to this curve, which is the what the theory says. Uh, so either our measurement infrastructure is wrong, our code is wrong, or uh, uh, we just uh, broke the rules and and proven the theory wrong. Uh, so I was very suspicious. Um, but probably um, this is ongoing uh, uh, work why uh, this is happening. So we know that we don't, it's difficult to implement the pure random walk because we have some rate control and we don't we're not doing the revisiting and all these things. So we have a bit of state. So probably that's why uh, it is, is a bit uh, more aggressive in this. So this is ongoing work. Uh, yeah. And um, something very exotic. Um, where uh, we built, uh, or not we, but uh, together with, uh, uh, with the University of Zagreb in uh, Hungary, we built an AI engine which can learn. So you, you have this, this, this notion of learning on top of a self-organizing system. So you can observe your own health, reason about it, and take action. 
So this is a bit, uh, it's a bit of a, a tongue-in-cheek, uh, uh, but you avoid talking to cheaters and spammers and you learn the properties uh, in this model. Uh, uh, so what we have is a combination of internet deployment, full self-organization, also really artificial intelligence learning, and then self-healing, huh? because if the network is spammed, it will actually die. Huh? Nobody uses that stuff. And if it works, if it's superior, then it actually grows. Huh? So then some sense, uh, I think this is an interesting, uh, that, that, yeah. It's a bit dramatic, but uh, a milestone has been crossed uh, for this uh, uh, work. But, um, uh, and these are all very uh, difficult things. I'm not an uh, AI expert, and this is also a very hard uh, paper uh, for me to read. Um, so it uses the central server-based uh, uh, stochastic gradient uh, descent, um, and where you have uh, the minimization of an uh, objective function, and this, it's the, it's the, the spam, uh, uh, which is modeled uh, in there. So you choose uh, from the training set and then you update the model. I have another slide on this. Uh, so what you basically do, instead of sending around raw data to detect spammers, what you actually do is you train the model using the local training sample. And in our case, we use a, uh, uh, what is spam and thumbs up and thumbs down from the users. So this is using uh, the Pegasus uh, algorithm, uh, so the, uh, uh, the SVM-based uh, uh, algorithm with combined uh, the SVM uh, with the stochastic gradient uh, descent on top of uh, the Elastic database. Uh, so this is uh, not internet deployed uh, yet, uh, so you can, you can download the code and run the simulations uh, uh, there. And what we're working on is that it would be fully integrated, hence the name uh, uh, Skynet that uh, uh, it understands that people revert moderation. So um, and we have this, this full implementation of the wiki style editing and, uh, and these things that people can just edit swarm names and other people can just revert them again. Uh, you, so you have these edit wars and all these things and who's the right one? And that it would actually understand or learn uh, what is true spam or are good, uh, the good guys and the bad guys. Uh, that's our, our hope. And uh, so this is offline evaluated, and this is then uh, with, with other uh, data sets, uh, the gossip learning framework you can, um, uh, you can download here. So uh, the total idea of integrating it and really putting this in Tribler is uh, uh, on our to-do list. Then uh, moving on to one of the key pieces uh, is the reputation system. So the goal is to have actual honest accounting. Hey, if you want to work together with people, you need to keep them honest. And um, one of the things is huh, that, you, that people need to contribute to the collective. Huh? Everybody just wants to download and nobody, nobody wants to upload to others. Huh? You just want to leech uh, from the system instead of leaving your computer on. Uh, that's a very common thing that's been the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the common cause of poor performance for all these uh, self-organizing or peer-to-peer -peer systems. So it needs to be robust to manipulation and prevent free riding. Oh, and also we want to make it generic, not just direct downloading, but also the proxy service, not just for a computer, but also even uh, uh, an, uh, that you, uh, you drain your battery, that you're carrying around on your mobile phone, you're carrying around uh, this information and you give it to others and you're leaving your, uh, uh, you're leaving your radio on that actually drains your battery. Uh, and uh, another is the, the open Wi-Fi internet service, but this is future work, so it should be generic. So this has been working on this for uh, a long time. And uh, as I said, this is key uh, to this vision that you have people working together that they can't leech. And uh, this is the measurable uh, key of s uh, a measurable thing of success if we can uh, get uh, a million people to collaborate uh, in this. So the theoretical grounding is a very nice uh, work on the game theory uh, model, uh, which is a, uh, uh, published there. So we know that when people collaborate with a single central server, that it actually goes faster. Uh, so we have these public BitTorrent communities where, where they just degrade to tit for tat. And we also have so-called private communities. And we did a, a, a long measurement uh, uh, of those. We actually see that people are incentivized to c stay on longer, uh, they are incentivized to seed, etc. And you see that you have a huge performance. Uh, this is the difference between uh, flaky downloads and uh, sustainable high quality streaming. Uh, 
If you just have a single server in control, and uh, if you don't know the password, you don't have the right friends, you don't have an invitation, you have community exclusion. Uh, so the people who are in the community, they are collaborating because uh, if they, they, uh, they have actually quite a lot of value in this community, so they want to stay in the community, so they behave, otherwise they're kicked out. So there's a clear boundary. So this is something we uh, want to replicate without the single central server. But this has been proven difficult. How do you make a self-organizing reputation system which actually works? People have been proposing things like 1994 and uh, still uh, uh, they're nice in theory but uh, uh, we can't get them to work and uh, other people also can't get them to work. Uh, so you always need a central server or single organization in control as uh, sort of the eBay uh, uh, auction police. It's like yeah this is a good person uh, and you have a few thousand of them or something. Or the Google it's like this is a good web page uh, and this this attack, this employs a lot of uh, engineers to keep, or police, uh, uh, internet police sort of, to keep this uh, yeah, up to date. Um, so it's a very nice paper, and uh, also I'm believing had the current uh, uh, work, so this is uh, since 2009, is, this is an interesting read, that uh, yeah, as of now people say, yeah, if you only integrate a social network in this, then people will be honest. Uh, I think that uh, yeah, that is also not, uh, uh, not very realistic. It needs uh, a lot more. Um, so we've been struggling to get this working. And uh, just to introduce our model, it's, uh, it's very simple, a graph. Uh, each peer just tells what they uploaded and downloaded, just the amount of megabytes to whom. And so peer one has uploaded 40 uh, megabytes to peer two. And if you talk to him, he will tell you that. Uh, so this is sort of the graph and how, how, how it, it spreads. And the key thing is that you refuse service to people who free, right? So if you talk to people, you get all these little snippets of information. You can build a graph out of that. And uh, uh, in theory, it works. Yeah, nice thesis about that in a week. Uh, this is time in a week, free riders, sharers, blah, blah, blah. They get this uh, different service, but only in, in for a certain critical mass. Eh? Works in simulations. But it doesn't work in our uh, system because we'd be BitTorrent, we'd uh, we play minority game, etc. Um, so the goal is to get this to the next level and to get this actually working for a large uh, group. Um, and it's not easy how this works. So our reputation system uh, is based on this notion that everybody shares part of the work graph, so to say. Uh, so this is work performed. And then four, note four, has a vision, a partial work graph. And node 3 has a partial uh, word graph after talking to various people. But everybody can lie and cheat. Eh? So you need, these, uh, uh, you need to have very sophisticated, uh, or max flow, that we use to, to, to read this graph. And your graph, you talk to other people, and then it grows. So now we assume pair 3 and 4 exchange their local view. And then actually you tie them uh, uh, together. Uh, so you need uh, certificates and all these things to uh, now three and four merge their graphs of the world, and they uh, and they they, they have a, uh, the same uh, graph. Uh, and this is how we did this. Uh, was it uh, uh, five years ago when we first deployed this and we crawled uh, the network? How does the graph look? And it actually sort of worked. So these are actual megabyte exchanged between tribal protocols. Uh, tribal peers who, ex uh, who, who support this, uh, this BitTorrent extension huh? and they exchange bytes uh, with each other and then an edge is formed. Um, but as I said, works in theory, uh, so we needed to improve the accuracy. Here you can see the accuracy, so normal we use Maxflow uh, and you only have one hop gossip and all these uh, uh, things, so you only talk about your direct interaction, when you talk to somebody he will only tell you this is the people I had direct interaction with, this is my upload and download. <laughs> so clearly, um, here's the error. The error was far too high for uh, a real implementation. Um, so what we have is uh, uh, we need to move to full gossip, it says, the simulator. Then we can get the error down. We need to use uh, get away from 2-hop max flow uh, for, for, uh, hey, for civil defense. And we need to do for 6. 6 is better. And uh, instead of reasoning from yourself uh, uh, as a starting point for max flow, uh, you need to reason, for example, from the, between this from the node with the highest between the centrality in the graph. Well, 
that gives a, a pretty good error rate, a, a satisfactory error rate. Except uh, there's this small thing that the computational intensity of between the centrality and all this max flow stuff is a bit high. Uh, so this is ongoing work. And uh, one of the things we're uh, improving now is using the Elastic database and also uh, using more eigentrust based instead of uh, uh, removing Maxflow and replacing that uh, with uh, uh, eigentrust uh, like algorithms. Um, so, one of the few things I still want to talk about uh, in Tribler is. Uh, yeah, this band as a currency idea, we, uh, if you look at the date here of the press attention, uh, uh, 2007, we started first deploying this uh, reputation system uh, that uh, people uh, can earn credits and, uh, and uh, get higher services they helped others. And uh, um, over the years, uh, uh, we've improved this, as I uh, discussed. And now we're getting up to a point uh, where we have the code uh, to make this work, we now have the screen design and all these things. So this is uh, coming up in, uh, in a few weeks uh, uh, or, or a month or two, where you, uh, we previously already had donate your bandwidth to Wikipedia, now you can donate to a, uh, to a certain uh, community, uh, fully decentralized, you can just donate uh, your, uh, uh, your bandwidth. And so to boost a channel, so we have the lightning uh, here. So if there's uh, a community or channels you like, you can donate it there. Um, and what you then have is you have a sort of a social standing uh, uh, in our clients. So we hope that people actually understand this and that we have this behavioral change, that people will, will leave their computer on and help more and all these things uh, because they can really do this nice accounting, social contribution uploaded, etc. And what are you doing, priorities, and, and, and uh, still ha use half my ha hard disk or, or all these settings uh, which we're uh, working on. So, after uh, talking about what we realized or ongoing work, just want to return in a few slides to, uh, to the Q media uh, uh, bits. And um, what we have now, eh? so this is a different uh, code base than, uh, than Tribler. So this is a, uh, uh, an, uh, a Twika uh, plugin. So this is a popular Twitter client. So we're building on to Twitter. Uh, actual code on an Android platform. We were sort of integrating our, uh, our streaming, and we have integrated our streaming uh, work. Uh, so this, uh, uh, this is an actual operational system where you can just have a single hash, and you just click on the hash, and it has all these miracle hashes and all these things, and the pieces exchange, and the handshake, and then whoop, the streaming begins on your smartphone. So this is now operational, and this is towards protecting against all known government attacks on media freedom, huh? that you just have a video, you just record a video with your phone, you send it out on the network, and if there's no internet, huh, the internet kill switch has activated, you, you, you walk around and you meet your friends, and then it will automatically transfer, and it will also have uh, hopefully this privacy protection. Huh? So, these are the so this is uh, one step uh, towards this. And um, it's not all about smartphones or PCs. We're also trying to go, uh, so we now manage to also get inside the television. These are very expensive televisions, uh, which ha happily uh, our university pays for. Um, so we have a peer-to-peer -peer streaming engine operational inside a, a, a television, which is rooted, uh, of course. And uh, uh, so it runs normal Linux, and we can do uh, just streaming from the remote control. So very fancy. Four students uh, uh, did this for this bachelor uh, project. Very interesting that they actually got this far. Very nice. So for the end of the year, uh, for this Q Media, I had to sort of demonstrate and we're no longer dependent on Twitter or the central servers or internet kill switches. Um, you can make a message, you can ex uh, 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 add a, a video uh, recording uh, to this. Uh, you have some friends which you identified and etc. And, and so the social networking side, the people you trust. And based on that, you sort of have people have news sources. Uh, you are a news source yourself. You create messages. You have top stories, and uh, uh, and uh, 
this is all personalized based on who your friends are and also there's, uh, there's more options uh, that you can uh, enable and disable new sources. So this is sort of uh, how we try to decentralize this thing and not be, we, we want to be compatible with uh, the Twitter network but uh, uh, fully decentralized on a smartphone. So this is uh, very interesting that talking to Occupy people and uh, the people in the global uh, square who want to decentralize uh, networks, uh, similar goals as ours. And um, on my concluding slides, just revisiting the bank of bits and uh, the long-term vision. Talked about uh, how getting these people to collaborate and then building up step by step to a sustainable cyber currency, uh, which has some intrinsic value because there's people you trust, you've done, uh, you scratch your back, I scratch yours, all these things. And then take the big step to offering this primary banking functions that you can store, lend and transfer money with just from a smartphone without an intermediary. So that means, this is a big goal, that you need to combine and strengthen all the big uh, uh, things uh, uh, of uh, the day, uh, where formerly Skype was uh, uh, decentralized. You have user-generated content like YouTube. Uh, you need to uh, also incorporate uh, the Wikipedia model and the community that keeping it clean. And also the Facebook sort of this friendship and trust and that people share their whole livelihood uh, online. And, uh, uh, and uh, you have durable identities uh, yeah, there. And uh, uh, combining that, uh, it needs to become boring and stable again instead of a source of profit. Uh, and then the goal, uh, the goal that it's uh, stronger than gold, uh, so to say, because it's collaborative, it's uh, jointly owned. And uh, it was very interesting, so we got out a rant uh, just before uh, everybody understood that Bitcoin uh, uh, was collapsing. Uh, that a, uh, uh, so this is a Bitcoin uh, image as, as one of the first uh, cyber currencies which actually sort of worked, except uh, there was no inflation control and all these things. And there was still this tiny thing that uh, in the architecture you need a consistent global broadcast, which nobody actually has implemented in a scalable way sort of uh, in the BitTorrent. So uh, Bitcoin also is not doing very well uh, at the moment. And then the final uh, slide, why do we think that uh, yeah, this, this big thing, uh, hey, you're talking about media and downloading and being all disruptive and uh, that you actually can make a difference in the real estate market and the global financial system because of a bunch of Swedish people. They actually have a very strange model, the generational model, where you get a loan, you get a house and you pay off your debt and you save up for the next generation. So instead of, say, instead of paying interest rate, you sort of pay for the next people to also lend again. Huh? So if as long as the, this is a pipeline uh, uh, which goes on and people have, there's, there's a certain growth and you d don't need to, uh, people shouldn't run away. Uh, it's a very interesting. So nobody gets rich, people just get houses without interest rate. I don't know, how many people actually pay a lot of interest rate on their mortgage? Move to Sweden. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they uh, actually have a long history. They were chased by kings and stuff because they had, a, uh, they had more money than the... Uh, uh, so they were chased out of Denmark and all these things. So this goes back, was it 90 years or something? Uh, so over the years this has grown and now they have a full banking license. Uh, I indeed. Uh, so bootstrapping this is not trivial. Yeah. They have limits to the growth rates, exactly, exactly. So uh, 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 copying this in cyberspace uh, uh, will not be easy, but I think there's enough people uh, who would like to uh, do these things. Um, so concluding, um, yeah, I hope you understood uh, a bit uh, this evolution and this big vision of cyber uh, collectivism. And I hope I, uh, I've shown that uh, we have some operational systems uh, and will it actually work, these things? Uh, 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 yeah, nobody knows. And um, yeah, so it's sort of the ambition that we're not just about media, but sort of reinventing media and money. Uh, and uh, uh, with my idealistic perspective of increasing media freedom and ending greed. Um, so the key thing is actually uh, finding funding for this. Uh, because who uh, will implement these things? Uh, so f uh, finding money and finding good scientists 
are, uh, or engineers are actually the key bottlenecks to these sort of uh, things. And also uh, a bit of a promo. Uh, so a few hours ago we made a new version which is more scalable and faster and all these things of Triber as we're building towards the 6.0 uh, release. And uh, the key thing about funding, eh, so many thanks to uh, uh, the Collectives and the peer to peer project. So this is a, uh, where we had, together with partners all around Europe, they were, uh, the European Union was giving 26 million euro in grants uh, to many of these partners. So we had to share uh, that money with a lot of people. And all these uh, previous slides and all that work is, uh, is all coming out of these uh, big projects. Uh, which is ongoing now is the European Institute of Technology, a new funding initiative, which is uh, very nice because they actually like the sort of very close to market and operational system, so we get some uh, funding from them. And this is the big glorious thing of the future in Europe. One billion euro uh, for, a, uh, for research funding. So this is sort of uh, uh, six people, uh, six groups are competing uh, for the pot of uh, uh, a, billion, uh, a billion euro and two groups will get it. And uh, I'm uh, heavily involved in Future ICT, which is focused on the sustainable finance. So it's a bit better than 50-50 that we get this uh, money. So that would be nice. And uh, so many thanks to our sponsors and hopefully future sponsors for this. And just a shameless advertising that if you have a friend who wants to do these things, then uh, uh, please consider going online and uh, telling them about it. Right. So that's a uh, time for questions, if that's a... Uh so will that solve Greek's problem? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not an economist, but uh, yeah, no, this is... Uh, pr uh, 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 they already have technically defaulted huh, as of a, a so-called credit event, so maybe they're a bit too deep uh, for this, uh, this solution, <laughs> unfortunately. And the United States State Department has financed some of these efforts to create uh, secure efforts for people to do P2P uh, networking in, in various yeah. countries. Yeah. How, does yeah. this, how does your effort relate to theirs? Uh, yeah, I uh, would like to get in touch with them. And uh, uh, but uh, yeah, this is always there's a lot of fragmentation going on in these things uh, in, in the open source world and all the research and uh, everybody just wants to have their own protocols, their own, they just want to develop technology instead of building upon others uh, because there is no successful system and that's also one of the things that I, 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 I'm very keen on, on building this community that uh, yeah, people would probably reuse your software and, and these people instead of everybody inventing their own uh, uh, system. So I know there are several initiatives but nobody ever has uh, made decent usable software uh, I believe. Fun. Do anything about it? They would probably just refer you to the NSF or DARPA. Yeah, there is some. Uh, there's some. I, I looked actually at the no. grant applications. No, I understand, but I think that they're. I think they would. They would push you off. They have their own agenda. Right. The agenda is to let the let the rabble, you know, annoy the bad guys. Yeah. That gets to the question of, of course, what is spam? Um, well, when you say spam is a message you don't like, right? But they're sending it because there's. 0.001% of the people who do want it. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, and everything works with a group of Swedes. There's no social structure <laughs> when implemented by 40 Swedes. Have you that's seen that as an hour and a half to the Swede that's going to be sitting next to me? <laughs> that, that Al also knows. <laughs> that's completely, un I mean, that's, that's cheating. So, sorry, um, using a Swedish example is cheating because the world isn't like Sweden? Yes. Is that you're saying? It doesn't scale? No, the social I'm, norms I'm and values of Sweden will not propagate no, to the American? I'm saying that a group of Swedes, no matter what you do, they, it basically works. It's, oh, that's interesting. Swedes, Swedes are fault tolerant. <laughs> so sure not like, He's using Sweden in a generic way. No, I'm actually... I have a Swedish <laughs> girlfriend, so I have first-hand experimental <laughs> knowledge of these things. I'm using Sweden in a very specific way. Uh, I'm actually referring to Swedes. There's a couple other groups with the same demographic characteristics, the same demographic properties that no matter what you do, it just works. Because of their natural tendency to cooperate or not cheat or free ride? Or I don't have a causal explanation. It's just an observational truth. 
Yeah, yeah, it's an anomaly. That would be very sad yeah, if oh. it doesn't uh, transform across the country. Well, it has to be suitably board. translated. What works in Sweden may not work in Norway, but for, for different reasons. Yeah. So you have to find out what those reasons are and see if they can be yeah, translated. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. The, uh, move it out of the control yeah. context and see if it. So, it's like. It's like uh, uh, I'm skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to transfer money around? No, they know. Okay. Uh, I understand. You think you can get past the U.S. banking regulations? You don't think the cops are going to come after you when the bad guys use it for money? Uh, well, well uh, just lock me up. Will a system like this shut down? Am I the bottleneck in this system? Who's the bottleneck in this system? What, what can they do? The other thing that's going to happen is that some virus is going to come along and transfer all my money to, to, to some black hole over there. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you need actual, well, either the bad guys have uh, two good PhDs or the good guys being this have, have good to make it secure. Infrastructure. The bad guys, you know, are, are as smart as the, the good guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have fake dollars in your wallet? Yeah. Not that I know of. Ah, but do you think uh, they uh, they are they work? So, but this is money, huh? So the cyber currency is also a trust issue. Huh? So th the spam is is one issue that they can infiltrate and 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 spam the trust network and the reputation system. Um, but now, instead of having banknotes or coins or uh, all, all, all these things with 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 uh, sort of denominate value, now you have sort of a reputation system which needs to have the sophistication to see what is the real, real value and, 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 and spam or not value. So this is very, it, it really changes things from, from watermarking or, or, or other uh, security measures to, to a reputation there's system. There's a layer of trust yeah. associated with paper money, but there's also a layer of trust in uh, credit cards, right? Ah, I, yes. I, I trust my bank to, to, to do the right thing. So far. Dude, yeah? And how much, uh, is it watertight or is there leakage? Acceptable leakage. There's acceptable leakage. That's yeah, cool. that's strange, huh? Yes. And it sure sort of works. Experience in actually widespread spread use of tribaler in China. Ah. And what has been the reaction to the authorities there? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you, if you know how to type Chinese characters on your keyboard and hit search, then you actually have content. Yeah, so it's a, uh, but, but now it's just about content. And you cannot communicate yet. It's, it's just uh, the multimedia uh, focus. So, uh, but our, our Twitter, uh, the, so the Q media side of this, uh, yeah, so I'll be very curious uh, to see how, uh, s how certain they have their own clone. Uh, but yeah, this, yeah, no, it's kind of, it's a bit scary if this stuff actually. Uh, well, there's more, uh, there's more uh, regimes who wouldn't like uh, this sort of technology to be widespread under their... Uh, uh, under their uh yeah, but some of them are serious. I think China doesn't go after someone until it becomes big. Well, wow, these guys are trying to become big. As I know. As they make money. <laughs> after they become big, then they will go after them. No, nah, they might have some anticipatory capability. Well, that's just the definition of big. <laughs> right. So yeah, this is a, uh, yeah. If it actually works, then uh, people are going to be worried about this. Uh, now you see that. Uh, uh, um, yeah, but you see it in, in good and evil uh, uh, things. It's just governments. Uh, so now, uh, how, how how social media now influences elections? So that's where uh, where people look at how the numbers go. So they try to influence social media. Is that is that government ma manipulation going on? They might take. Well, it's they just try to understand these systems and try to use them and try to, uh, um, yeah, block them. But if it's smartphone based, you can't just take away the smartphones because they're 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 now moving to the 99 euro price point uh, that you everybody can afford these things. The smartphones with with uh, direct Wi-Fi, NFC capability, and all these things they they, they will be just in a. Uh, so we're projected to have one billion smartphones in 2015. That's a lot of smartphones and, and all these regimes also. So, right. Very true. Sure. So your position is there are no countermeasures they can take. <sighs> it's um, designed to actually work. Yeah, no, there's not much stuff you can do. You just need to get in the ground and, and start intercepting this stuff. 
Once it can pass on cell phones, there's not much you can do. But just on the, on the higher level, huh? just to do pollution and inject fakes and all that stuff. And, and, uh, yeah. uh, but you can't attack the technology itself easily anymore. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it can, if you can get a SD card out of the country or beam it out at special uh, points, hey, you need to get it across the border uh, or, or travel and all these things. But you can, yeah, that, that, that's all too difficult to, to block then. You still skeptical? I'm oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, let's go back to an easy one. You said no DNS. There's got to be some mechanism for finding something and getting started. When I boot this thing up. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you need a list. Uh, yeah. You need a list of uh, uh, IP numbers. Uh, uh, and and y you poke them. It's like, okay, do you know, uh, are you still alive? Are you alive? And, and uh, if there's one alive, then they can forward you. Okay, this is the uh, other people in the network, so they can forward. So if you have that list, uh, just, so that can be a few thousand peers but yeah that that uh, that is the weak point the bootstrapping uh, of these things but that can also be friend invitation or all these things that it goes viral so it is a weak point in this but if this is a point of attack then it can be again it, it makes things people need to willing to get it and, and actively search for it then and then you need to get this invitation system going and then uh, that would also the be system. Other band. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 that's that. Uh, exactly, you need uh, email or these sort of things, out-of-band communication to bootstrap then. Yes, exactly. So, I guess, can you elaborate on, you know, what happens if the government switches the internet off? And how does it affect Q-Media? Ah, yeah, yeah, so, uh, well, you know what happens to this sort of, if you have full, uh, uh, full, uh, so Twitter is easy to turn off. And uh, what would be the goal uh, in a bit further uh, onwards that uh, this, this whole storing on your cell phone. Uh, so, so you need to be in radio contact and you, you, you meet somebody and uh, you just exchange. Uh, they also have uh, the QMedia app running. So this is the scenario. And then with direct Wi-Fi, the new upcoming standard, you have from user space in, uh, in, in Android. You have complete control of your radio. You can sniff and, and, and you get handles if there's incoming packets. Very nice API from user space <laughs> and um, so you just get uh, the latest Twitter uh, you get a bunch of Twitter messages so you just walk around with your device and everybody who else uh, has uh, 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 updates of the Twitter messages you just get a, 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 a feedback so this is difficult to intercept huh? you have to impound all the uh, all the, uh, the cell phones uh, this whole thing which is sort of efficiency but what fraction of my battery storage is going to stuff I'm interested in as compared to helping the rest of the world? Exactly. It's about altruism again, or 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 uh, incentive know, compatibility. Numbers on this, so we can discuss whether it's you know um, cost me. Yeah. How much is transferring 10 megabytes through direct Wi-Fi? depending as a range of distance. Eh? You have the 40 meter uh, uh, distance, or you have, uh, what is it? You have the, the real, if you just have uh, thin 30 centimeters apart, then you go to 54 megabit per second, and it's very power efficient. But this is just a, a few milliwatts, uh, I think. And this is, uh, I think, the in the back in the old days, uh, so this is 2002, the Lucent uh, hardware, that was doing uh, two watts or something continuously. But now it's just uh, 100 or 200 milliwatts, I think, if you do sustained transfer. So it's um, um, a few megabytes per, what is it, hour or something? Uh, that would be a decent flow. No idea. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> you can get a crank for yourself. <laughs> Walk in the like sunlight. Any of the flashlights have a crank, and some of you have a cable, it can charge you. Yeah. The fun stuff always happens off with the curve goes off anyway. Well, thank you. Thank you. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.